So if you should take up this component and align it, you will notice that the OH group will be over here and the CL group will be here. So when we say not superimposed, right? So first, if it's a stereo isomer, it means that the connectivity is the same. So if you notice, both compounds have one carbon and the, those one carbon have the same groups connected to it. So for a stereo isomer, the first rule, it must have the same connectivity. What is the arrangement in space? The same? No. The OH here, if we try to place this molecule on top of this one, so if we are superimposing it, this OH group is not in line with this OH group, right? It will be in line with CL group, and the CL of this one, right, will be in line. So this CL will match up with this OH, this OH will match up with the CL. So that is what we mean by non superimposable. So the groups will not all fit perfectly. Typical example is your hand, right? Your hands are basically mirror, mirror images of each other, right? So when they are facing each other, everything aligns properly. But if you turn the palm, the back of your hand in the palm of the next hand, you realize the, the fingers don't align. As in the, the thumb is with the little finger, all right? So that's it, right? They don't align. So the thumb is not aligned with the next thumb. When you try to rest the palm of one hand in the next, right? So it is non superimposable. Unless everything aligns properly, it is non superimposable, right? So the first thing we did. And show it as four different groups. Four different groups that makes it chiral. So if it cannot have a chiral carbon, then it's not optical. Then now you'll see if it is a if it can form a mirror image. Once it has a chiral carbon, it has a mirror image. Right? If you try to rest with this molecule and this one, the OH group will not match with the OH group. The chlorine group doesn't match with the chlorine group. So it is non-superimposable. Right? So these two compounds are enantiomers. So remember, another name for optical isomers is enantiomer. Right? So these two are enantiomers. Right? So they're optical isomers because they have a chiral carbon. Right? and the, the mirror images are non superimposable. So let's work a more, one with more carbon atoms present. So let's draw the structure. So CH3, CH2, COH, CH3, CH3. So we are going to check each carbon and see if any of them has four different groups attached. If you look at this carbon, 
it has three hydrogens, so it cannot be chiral. It must have four different groups. This carbon has two hydrogens, so it cannot be chiral. If you look at this carbon, all right, and when you have it complex like this with a lot of carbon atoms, when you're looking at each carbon, right? So this carbon, right, it has an OH group. It has a CH3 group here. It has a CH3 group below it. And then it has a CH2, CH3 group, right? So everything to the left of it is one group, to the right is the next group, above and below that is the next group. So you're not just looking at the atom directly attached to it. So you're not going to say this carbon has two carbon, has three carbons, so it is not chiral. You are looking at the group. So the CH3 is one group. So CH3, CH3, the OH, and everything over here is a group. But again, this one is not chiral because it has two methyl, two methyl groups attached. It must have four different groups, so it cannot be chiral. This carbon has three hydrogens, cannot be chiral. This carbon has three hydrogens, so it cannot be chiral. So this compound is not an optical isomer. So no chiral carbon present. So no chiral carbon means not an optical isomer. Because for it to be the optical isomer, we must have four different groups. These groups are the same, so for that reason, it cannot work. Let's turn next example. So let's check this compound if it has any chiral carbons. So this carbon, remember, we are looking for a carbon atom with four different groups. This carbon does an oxygen, a hydrogen, and all of this here would be a next group. So it only has three groups, so it cannot be chiral must have four groups to begin with. If we look at this carbon, it has H, it has H, it has OH, it has the CHO group here, that's three group, and then that. So we have four different groups attached to this carbon atom. So it is chiral. If you look at this carbon atom, it has OH. So this carbon atom, it has OH, it has H. Then up here, that would have been a group, and whatever is below it is a next group. So this one is chiral as well. If you come to this carbon, again, HOH, that's two group. Below it is the next group. 
and above it is a next group and the group above it is not the same as below so this molecule actually has four chiral carbons all right so the first in the very first example i gave you fluorine oh group i think it was cl and the hydrogen this one is simple straightforward right four different atoms but remember it don't have to be an atom it can be a more complex group so when you're looking at this carbon the entire group up here c double bond o and h remember that is why i did this all right so this carbon here or h is over here H is here. Now above it is the CHO group. Right? And then below it, it's all of this. Right? So you have the four different groups attached. Because if you are looking at, if you are looking at it in terms of saying this carbon, it has OH, H, and two C's then these three carbons this carbon it has h oh c and c this carbon it has oh h c and c but that is not what we are doing you are not counting you are not looking at the atoms directly attached you are looking at groups remember to do it like this Whatever is above the carbon, that's a group. Whatever is below it, that's a group. So it's OH, H, CHO, and not just C. So CHO is not the same as all of this here. So this compound is chiral. Right? Therefore, this compound ex exhibits optical isomerism. Once you have a chiral carbon, you have optical isomers. Alright? So that's a chiral compound, a chiral molecule. Let me see if I have a next example. No, that was it. Alright? So that's it for the optical isomers. Alright, so that's it for isomerism. So we have the optical, we have the geometric, which is the stereo isomers. Right? The connectivity in the atoms will be the same, right? But the arrangement in space will be different. Right? So this example, what I was doing here. In most cases, for stereo isomers, you will get a compound and ask to identify a chiral carbon. You need to know that you are not just looking for four atoms, but four groups. So learn how to identify the different groups. The easiest way to draw the, identify the carbon and draw the four lines. Whatever is above, below, different groups. Alright, so that's it for this video. We will work past papers involving optical isomers and how to identify them. So that's it for this video. If you have any question, you can ask in the comment section.